if we look, uh, we had finished uh, dealing with the, uh, going through the Lord's Prayer, Matthew chapter number 6. I want to kind of reference just one thing here. If I could, praise God. Hallelujah. After this manner, therefore pray ye. Now, if we look through this prayer, I want you to remember this. We, we spent at least two Wednesday nights talking about praying this prayer and earnestly praying it every day. And whenever we get finished with this prayer, the, the Lord said to put an amen on the end of it, and that means it is finished. I'm not going to worry about it anymore. I'm not going to be troubled by it anymore. Once I pray this prayer every morning, I, the things that, that most people have to worry about, I'm going to trust the Lord for. Now listen, if we read it this way. After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That's what we desire. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us something to, to partake of and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Once we pray those things, we don't have to, we don't have to struggle with it or worry about it anymore. But I think that's one thing that we have forgot about is the Lord did give us an example of when we pray, this is the formula. To make sure that whenever we get up in the morning, that first and foremost that we take our life and we present ourselves to the Lord and we say, Lord, we're here because of you. We are your children today. And we process down that prayer, working it through each step of that. Now think about it. Each step, after this manner, we recognize God, who He is. His kingdom upon this earth as it is in heaven. He's given us our daily bread. Forgiving our debts as we forgive others. Leading us. How many would like to know that you're not being led into temptation? Isn't that right there one blessing that you just don't ever think about? Yeah. Because if we're walking after the Lord... Now listen, if we're walking after our own pathway or we get off the on our own tangent, sure, we can go down the wrong pathway. But if we are walking with the Lord, He will not lead us into temptation. The Lord said He would not tempt any man or any woman with, with that type of temptation. Amen? Now think about that. If we don't have to worry about temptation, well, who tempts you? Satan? Ourself? There's two of your biggest enemies right there. So if we can put them at our beginning of our prayer, that God, you're going to take care of self, which means selfishness is what that means. It's not selflessness, uh, selflessness the way that we're supposed to be. But sometimes we get selfish. Amen? But whenever we follow God, we're not going to be selfish. We're not going to be drawn into something that we're not supposed to be into. He'll not leave us there. I, hey, I've got to be the first one today to realize, Lord, You've given us promises here in the midst of this that once we pray those prayers, the Lord said He would take care of it. Let's, let's, I'm just going to go over it just real quick one more time. For if you forgive... Uh, I'm sorry. The daily bread, forgive our debts, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us. Wesley, I know you think I'm, I'm over there, but I ain't got but one and he's not even over there, so I'm having to kind of go this way. So I'm not looking at anybody. <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. Might be just my mind pointing to that, but anyway. Praise God. It, it just, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now let's go on down just a little bit further. And whenever we finish that prayer, we say, Lord, we're putting it behind us. Amen. It's behind. So then whenever we get up to go about our daily duties, whether that be work, whether it be getting the house in order, what, no matter what those duties are, once we get up and we pray that prayer and we say, Lord, Amen, we're, we're finishing. That, that means, God, you're going to take care of us from that point on. Then we can go on. How can we be productive if we're worrying about life all the time? How can we be projected doing things to help our family or doing things that will help one another? Let's go on just a little bit further. Okay. So as we see this, and there's a finish here, 
So there's the prayer part. Now, verse number 14, we're starting to see what the Lord's given us to take up. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you will forgive not men their trespasses, neither will you forgive your Father forgive you your trespasses. So once we pray and we get on our day, God expects us to be merciful. In other words, what He's saying here in so many in, in, in so many words, if we can just put it straight to the point, if we can't have mercy and forgive somebody else, God can't forgive us. That's what it means. That's as simple as it comes. There's no explaining to that. If we cannot forgive others, then the Bible said God will not forgive us. If we don't have the ability... Why? Because God is love. If we can't forgive, if we can't love one another, then how can we forgive them? And if we can't forgive them, then God looks into our life and we're saying, oh please Lord, have forgiveness on me. And He's saying, why aren't you showing mercy to the ones under you? Amen? Praise God. I like the way everybody's looking tonight. Maybe I need to preach this way. Amen? Praise the Lord. Everybody's got that, that, that deer in the headlights look. All right, let's go on down just a little bit further. So forgiveness is having the heart of the Father. It's having the love of God. And the biggest thing about forgiveness is being able to let it go and forget about it. Because even our sins, doesn't the devil always try to bring them back up? Don't He try to bring them back to the forefront and try to make us feel bad or try to make us feel some way where we're not cap we don't feel adequate or capable of doing what God's called us to do? But God said, look, if you will, if you'll put these things in perspective and start your day out right, He said, I'll guide you through the day. I'll take care of your difficulties. And listen, sometimes in our life, praise God, we just have to put our trust and our faith in Him. And say, Lord, I believe. I don't see it yet. I don't understand it. I don't see anything materializing. But God, I believe what you said in your word. And I'm going to stand upon it. Amen? We've got to get back to standing upon God's word. And believing that His word is yea and amen. Forgiving people of their trespasses. That's goodly. But it's also godly. If we go on down in verse number 16. Moreover, when you fast, now this is something that I now, now you're gonna have to forgive me if it's kind of I'm not trying to make it comical, but it says this. Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sound of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. The Lord saying. When you fast, don't go around looking like you're fasting. And you know what? I found this to be true. Us as Christians, if we're supposed to keep that between us and God, how many times have you ever met somebody that they come and said, my God, I'm so hungry, I'm fasting today. I'm, I'm just using an example. But what they would do they would scrunch up their face when they were going and fasting and it would cause a defigurement of their face and people would know they were fasting. They would probably walk slower and hump over. Oh God, I have no nourishment in my bones. But the Bible tells us whenever you fast, don't let anybody else know. Don't let it be known. Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance. Why? Because people that let it know, they're people that want to be patted on the back and say, you know what? Thank you for fasting today. Thank you for being a good Christian. Thank you for doing what you're supposed to do already. <laughs> Amen. Did I say that out loud? I don't think a pastor is supposed to say that, is he? Amen. Praise God. But whenever we do these things, we don't want to get credit from man. We don't want somebody to say, hey, well, well done. We want God to reward us. Don't we remember if we go back over to, to the Beatitudes, He says, what you do, let it be done in secret, that your left hand 
not know what your right hand is doing and your right hand not what your left hand is doing? So here he's telling us, be careful that we don't get caught up in religious things that we want everybody to know how religious we are so we tell everybody how religious we can be. There's a difference in being religious and being spiritual. Spiritual is wanting to bow down and lift the Lord up and exalt Him. Religion is wanting to stand up and beat your chest and say, look at what I do and look at who I am. Last thought on this before we go any further. If we start looking at the Bible and start reading it accordingly, we might find ourselves breaking some of the rules as well that we need to do. I never thought in my... And, you know, and I've read that scripture many times, but I never thought to the extent of that you're doing something to be seen of man. That you're doing something to get a reward from someone. And listen, the Bible says this. The Bible says if we receive our reward down here, then it won't be in heaven. If we receive the reward, in other words, the congratulation, in other words, the, the reward for whatever we do, if that's the reason we did it is just so somebody would look at us and say, hey, well done job, then that's what we're going to get is what the pat on the back. That's what we desire. But we got to go deeper than that, folks. Listen, we want people to see God working in us and through us. Amen. We want them to see us. And what happens is this. We are a vessel, folks, and the only way that we can allow God to use us is to be a vessel that He can flow through. And and just looking in here today or, or tonight and just you know thinking about how God God can move everywhere that we are. That means whenever we leave out of this place, we go different places, but we've still got the heartbeat of God in our mind and in our heart. Amen. We want to do what the Lord desires us to do. We want to be faithful in these things. And listen, if we're going to do these things, we got to start getting our life organized. Can somebody say amen? How many would say organized from the beginning, at least this part? That first thing in the morning, we get up, we get our Bible, and we start praying, and we spend time with the Lord. And then at the ending of the day, that we put in that time that we're going to spend time with the Lord, that reading the Word and praying that night. Now, in the middle of it, you can feel it however you want to. But let's start out the day because of that. Because the Bible teaches us that every morning should be welcomed with the Lord and every night should be uh, put down with the Lord as well. In other words, that we wake up with Him in the morning, but then whenever we lay ourselves down at night, that we're under His protection and under His care, so we have taken care of our life for that day. Amen? Praise God. Let's go a little bit further. It says that they have their reward, but thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head with oil, wash thy face, that thou appear not unto man to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Amen? The things that we do for God. The things that we do for God. You know, that's kind of what... And I'm not going to say that, that I, you know, I get a lot of inspiration by people putting things on, on Facebook and putting scriptures and things on there. But I was thinking to myself, if we took as much time to pray or to read God's Word as we do in those things, man, we could be so much further along in the kingdom of God. Amen. But the, the, funny, the, th the funny thing is this, but we're, we're, we're sharing scriptures and sharing prayers and it's all things to get us closer to God. But if we would stop that and just spend more time with God. I think that's where we're missing out on. Because I know this for me. If I'm not careful whenever I get to doing something for the Lord, I'll start doing something along with it. And I won't give Him my full attention. I won't give Him that that He deserves. Listen, if God has saved me from my sin and He has delivered me and He has saved my family and He has ministered to my family, then I can set aside everything else and say, thank you, Jesus. Let me spend some time with you. Amen? Praise God. Not only for those that He's done, but also for the future for those that He's going to save. 
for those that are not yet the children of God. But everything that we do in our life is to benefit something that's coming forward, something that's coming up. And we know that the Lord is coming soon and it's time for us to set our house in order. Amen? Praise God. Get everything in order. Listen, you know, many times, if we, if, if you know, and we're talking about something that's, that's very hard to talk about now because you talk about fasting, nobody wants to fast. Nobody wants to skip meals. But it's a way of pushing away from the table and saying, Lord, I want to feed my spiritual man greater than my physical man. So I start praying and reading God's Word. I'm fasting. I'm pushing away from that that separated me from God in the first place. In other words, that that the appetite that separated Adam and Eve from God in the beginning. Now I'm separating that and saying, Lord, I want spiritual things in my life. Amen. Many people today, they won't do it because of whatever reason. They'll have an excuse for not fasting. But just let me t tell you this. If we trust God... He can take care of us if we fast. If we believe His Word that is yea and amen. Now if you're hypoglycemic and you can't go or whatever it is that you can't go without food or whatever or you'll pass out, you don't need to be doing that. You don't need to be fasting like that. We'll figure out something. You can fast something else. And I, I thought about this today too. If we would go ahead and fa uh, fast our cell phones when we get home at night... That would probably be a great thing. Not able to get on the cell phone and not check any social media. Can't be able to check out what's going on in the world today. You know, that'd probably be a peaceful thing, wouldn't it? Well, maybe that's for another time, so we'll just... Uh, we'll... But have you ever tried that? Have you ever just put your cell phone aside? Just, just for a little bit. It's hard to do, folks. I don't know about you. But somehow or another, mine is connected in with my brain because if I wake up in the middle of the night, it'll ping, the light will come on, I'm thinking. Now, how does it know I just woke up? So something's up with them things anyway. Anyway, let's get back to the Word. Praise God. All right. Verse number 19. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither the moth nor the rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. There's where your heart will be. Where's our treasure at tonight? You know, there's nothing on this planet that we can make or create that will not be destroyed by time. If there's a, enough time, we can't make nothing to last for everything. So this scripture saying everything that we work hard for, everything that we try to go after to try to uh, make our life better, everything that we're trying to uh, maybe drive a nicer vehicle or, or live in a nicer house, all those things right there that, um, that we look at that one day if time is long enough, the vehicle will be in a junkyard or a museum. The house will either be remodeled or either torn down because it can't last. But the Bible said you can put something in something that will last. And that's you can lay your treasures up in heaven. You can start laying treasures up in heaven where the moths can't eat away at it and the rust can't destroy or decay uh, uh, the metal, whatever it may be, that you storing up things in heaven that is that is it is actually it's almost like storing up an account that we're putting things in heavenly places. It's investing in the things of God, and every time we invest, every time we put something in the kingdom of heaven, that God begins to do something in our life. There's something that transforms our lives. And listen, folks, if we're in need of anything today, it's spiritual. We're in need of spiritual life. We're in need of a stirring up. We're in need of God getting a hold of us and saying, you know what? I have not failed you. I have not given up on you. I have not forgotten about you. But the Lord speaking in our life and saying, I know exactly where you're at. 
and I know how to minister to your life. Praise God. That's what God's speaking to us. He knows where we are. How many of us, let me just ask for some hands. How many of us through the difficult couple of years that we've been through, how many is amazed how God sustains you? Let's go ahead and raise your hand. Come on. Financially, physically, spiritually, mentally, all of I mean, God sustained us. I'm going to tell you what. You know, this is this is something that I, I'm, I'm amazed. You never, you, you never are able to come and not have service in a church. And then still people give and we still go through the year and and, it, and even better than probably what we do when we're all you know healthy and there's no COVID or anything else going around. But what I'm getting at is that God sustained the church through that. And I thank God for it because I didn't know what else to do except just to try to make everybody as safe as possible. And like I said, whenever you miss services, people don't make services up and give later on and things like that. Usually it's just a missed time. A missed time. But we watch week after week how God brought somebody or somehow there was a miracle. And listen, there was a couple of, of uh, things that God had had sent to the church through through friends and family that we received. And it helped the church through it all. I'm thinking, Lord, even during the difficult times, You still sustain us. We're still here, folks. You might be going through a difficult time. You might be going through something that feels like it just seems like hell on earth but just wait God's bringing about a restoration God's bringing about a fresh anointing God's bringing about something new in your life something that he wants to lift us up and encourage us that we can continue to walk in faith in the name of Jesus amen, amen. praise God we must continue on we must continue on listen we look back in the back of the church and there's kids back there that they need to see somebody that's trusting God. They need to see their parents praying. They need to see them reading the Word of God. Listen, they're watching everything we do and we want everything in their life to be great. We want them to be the most successful people that they can be. But folks, if we don't teach them about God, then what is success if you die and go to hell? Man, we got to realize that we're talking about life and death. The decisions that we make, the choices that we make, we're not only making our choices, but our family's choices as well. And do we want to be a family that are that is favored of God? Amen. Do we want to be a blessing? Do we want to be a blessing to others as God blesses our life? Lay up treasures in heaven. You know, sometimes we're we're honing in on some of the uh, some of the uh, things that we need to kind of get more involved in with our with our kids or grandkids, and that is just sharing the word in such a way that they can hear and see that God's word is not only something that we share, but it's something that does work. Amen. Prayers do get answered because of the faith. Listen, if we didn't do anything else, if we didn't do anything else except read the Word of God, there would be enough in there to touch our life and to minister our heart. But God gave us the Word and His Spirit. And then the Lord gave us one another. Amen. He's not left us here by ourselves. We're here to lay treasure up, treasures up in heaven. Amen. Praise God. We want our children, as I said, to be the most successful. Our, our grandchildren to be the most successful. But friends, the first and foremost thing that we need is to make sure that they know who Jesus is. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where's our heart? Where's our heart? I think that I can say truly that our heart is in heaven because that's where the Lord resides. Everything that's been done, everything that's been said, God has put into practice. He has put into evidence. 
everything that we see around us, God has placed there. And now all He's asking is, won't you give me your heart? Won't you give me your heart? That's not just talking about one day to just pray a prayer at an altar. It means, Lord, every day I want to give you my heart. Every day I want to live for you. Every day I want to honor you. Every day I want to exalt you. And there's some days that I do and there's some days that I don't quite make it. That for whatever reason, the struggle was too hard that day. But I know that I have one that I can trust that will help me. That will bring me strength. That will bring me help. God is on our side tonight. God loves us with an everlasting love. And listen, He gave us His heart when He gave us His Son. He gave us His heart. And now He's just asking, could we give Him our heart 100% completely? Not withholding back anything. Doesn't mean tonight that we'll always be perfect and always say and do the right things that we're uh, that we need to. But it does say, Lord, I'm pliable. Lord, I'm not finished yet. I'm I'm still being worked on, Lord. And Lord, there's still things that agitate me and things that that cause me to get upset and things that happen around my life. But God, don't let those things snuff out the love that you have for me and others. Don't let it snuff out tonight, God, the things that You have prepared for us and our families today, God, that we are not only here, Lord Jesus, fighting for ourselves, but God, we are fighting for one another. We are fighting for our families. We're fighting for our loved ones. We're fighting for our neighborhood. We're fighting for our neighbors, our friends, our co-workers. We are fighting every time we get up in the morning and get into the battle. Every time you go into the battlefield, every time you go to work, every time you take care of what you do on a daily process that you are in the battlefield that God is planning and preparing for you on that day and that we're laying treasures up in heaven where the moth and the rust is not corrupt and the thieves cannot break through and steal. Oh Lord, we give you praise tonight, God. Because Lord, I need your help, Lord. Lord, I need Your help to live according to Your Word. I need Your help, God, to walk with me every day of my life. God, I need Your help, Lord Jesus, to strengthen, to bring strength in my life. God, I cannot live without You. Without You, Lord, I can do nothing. But Lord, Your Word declares that with You we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us tonight. Lord, with You all things are possible. And Lord, so even the jobs tonight, even the, the sickness tonight, even the ones that are in the hospital and those that are not able to be here tonight. Even right now, You're ministering in their lives. You're meeting our needs together, God. And help us, God. Help us to join together and be one body of Christ. Help us tonight, Lord Jesus. To be that, that we can hold up those that are sick, those that their hands are, are uh, hanging down tonight, God. But we can lift them up and we can pray one for another and believe Your Word is yea and amen. God, I ask You to touch our church and our families, God. I ask You to touch and to minister, Lord, to our nation, God. Lord, right now. Lord Jesus, right now. Lord, let there be an awakening take place across this nation today, God. An awakening, oh God, that You begin to open up our eyes and let us know, Lord, the time is winding up soon. And Lord, we better get our eyes back upon You, Lord. We ask for Your mercy and Your grace. Lord, whenever I fail or I do something in my life, Lord Jesus, the same way You have mercy and forgiveness for me, let me have mercy and forgiveness for others today, God. We give You praise and glory in this house tonight. I ask You right now to touch, Lord, our families tonight. God, touch them financially. Lord Jesus, the, the things that are coming our way, Lord, the, the things that are happening around us, God, I ask You to touch our families, Lord Jesus, and minister to every aspect of their life tonight, God. Lord, meet each and every need, God, according to Your 
riches and glory. We just ask You right now to meet right now each and every need. God, Lord, Right now, in the name of Jesus, right now we give you praise. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in our lives. We thank you right now, Lord Jesus, for opening up doors. We're thanking you right now for healing the sick. We're thanking you right now, Lord, for opening up jobs. Lord, we thank you today, God, for opening up our eyes today, God, that we can see, see you, Lord, in such a greater way that, Lord, we keep our eyes upon you because there's so many things that's trying to distract our life today, God. So many things trying to vie for our attention, God. We give you praise. We glorify you, Lord, this Wednesday night at, the, at this service. And Lord, we just want to take an opportunity, Lord, just to say thank you, Lord, and to praise you and to bless your holy name, God. I ask you right now, Lord Jesus, just to strengthen us, Lord, as we walk forward, Lord, to continue to give us an appetite for spiritual things tonight, God, to continue, continue to, Lord, let us be hungry for the things of God. We ask you right now to touch and to minister, to meet each and every need, God. By your power and by your might, Jesus. Lord, we give you praise and glory and honor.